Hello freaks and welcome to day one of Freak Week. So yes, it is that time of year again. It is time for seven creepy videos in a row. And we are kicking off Freak Week with a really creepy story. This one had me shook, like, you know, the type of shook where you're awake in the middle of the night on your phone, like quaking next to your husband who's sleeping in your bed, like that type of shook. So before we get started, I just wanted to remind you guys about the Freak Week shirts that are available for this week only. 20% of the money earned from these shirts will be going to Thorn. So it's really awesome. There's two different types for two different, you know, personalities of people. And second of all, I'd like to thank our sponsor for today's episode of Freak Week, which is a real freaky one that definitely needed a sponsor. Today's episode of Freak Week is sponsored by Murder in the Alps, which is an awesome phone game. As I've mentioned before, I really like phone games. I think they're really good for people like me who have ADHD or people with anxiety in general because it's really calming for the mind and I actually see it as an act of self-care in a way. I love mystery games, obviously, duh, I'd be into mysteries. And I'm sure all of you guys are too and Murder in the Alps is a really interesting mystery game. Actually kind of like an interactive crime novel. So you're almost reading a story as you're playing the game. And it's really fun, there's even little extra things and little side things such as solitaire. I was playing solitaire on it last night. What's so cool about it though is it takes place in the 1930s and it lets you kind of experience that authentic 1930s atmosphere. It's a detective themed game and basically you need to solve the mysterious case and interact with different characters in the game to reveal their secrets and then you will find out which one is the killer. And there's also a variety of crazy mini games and unique achievements so the player will never get bored. It has a lot of like hidden object type games which I really like like and I find really relaxing. And it's just one of those games that you can whip out and play at any time and kind of pick back up in this mystery story. Definitely like in the car. Actually, I was playing it when I got a tattoo the other day. <laughs> so you can really play this game everywhere. Be sure to check out Murder in the Alps. There is a link to download it for free. Now let's get freaky. Okay guys, so today I'm gonna be telling you about the horrifying story of the Lalari Mansion. I had never heard of this story, but American Horror Story actually covered this like did a season based off of it. To this day, no one knows the final resting place of Madame Lalari. And I've never seen it, but the true story of the Lalari mansion is terrifying. Now this story actually kind of reminds me of the movie Get Out. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's one of my favorites. It's a really, really interesting movie and just a crazy plot. So this is Marie Delphine McCarty and she went by Delphine. Now I just want to let you guys know that the dates and the facts in this case are a little bit shaky. Different sources said different things because this is a very old story and obviously as stories are passed on over time, details get changed and switched around and a little bit murky. So I just wanted to warn you in advance. But Delphine Delphine was born in New Orleans on March 19th of 1787, and she was one of five kids. She was born into a rich white family, and before she was born, they moved from Ireland to New Orleans. Delphine actually got married in 1800, but her husband died, and then she got married again in 1808, and her second husband died as well. But in that time, she ended up having five children between the two different men. But then on June 25th, 1825, Delphine got married again, and this time, it was to a man named Dr. Leonard Lalari or Louis. And in 1831, she purchased property on 1140 Royal Street in New Orleans, Louisiana. The property was in her own name and her husband had little involvement in the whole thing actually. And in 1832, she built a three-story mansion on that property with part of the mansion being the slaves quarters. Now, back in this time, it was really common to have slaves. Unfortunately, it is a dark part of history but it is reality. Obviously, since she was a rich woman, she was going to have slaves. It was very common. She lived there with Louis and their two daughters. I'm not sure what happened to her previous children before this. They were actually really popular in the area, very well known and respected by the townspeople of New Orleans. And one thing that people knew about the Lalaris is that they were known for throwing really lavish and fancy parties. But there was some suspicion around this family. At 
some point while they were living in this mansion, rumors started spreading around town that Delphine didn't treat her slaves properly. Between 1831 and 1834, there are several accounts of people talking about how Delphine mistreated her slaves or how they witnessed her mistreating them. But even though there were all these reports and rumors of her mistreating her slaves, it didn't match up with how she was treating them in public or how she was treating people of color in general in public. She was known to be really nice to them, like almost overly nice. A lot of people said that she looked like she treated her slaves fairly, which, you know, what did that mean back then? But um, at the time, fair for slavery. And there were even records in 1819 and 1832 of her setting her slaves free. But despite the general idea that she was, you know, treating her slaves pretty well, there still were these rumors that seemed to just never go away that she mistreated them in some sort of way. And since the rumors had gone so strong for so long, they decided to eventually have a lawyer go to her house and remind her kind of of the rules of slave ownership at the time and the basic minimum requirements for treatment. And when the lawyer visited them, he said he had a fine time with her and he didn't see any red flags of mistreatment of the slaves or anyone that looked really unhappy. However, this was not the case. There was a claim that one of the slaves at the time finally decided to throw himself out of the window to avoid being punished by Delphine. And if you can see in this picture, the window is still cemented off. So, so creepy. And then another one of their neighbors actually saw a 12 year old girl who was actually named Lee jump off of the roof of the house to her death. Apparently what had happened is she was brushing Delphine Lalari's hair and she kind of snagged it or tugged it the wrong way and pulled on it and Delphine got so mad she started whipping her and chasing her around and this little girl got so scared that she went out of the window onto the roof and jumped to her death and Lee was just buried in the ground of the mansion, which wasn't all too uncommon for slaves. I mean, a lot of them didn't get proper burials or were reported as dead. And later on, it was discovered that there were more grave sites in the yard, not just Lee's. And the people that were buried there died from reasons that are unknown. There were also a lot of reports that Delphine liked to keep her cook chained up to an oven in her house so that she could, you know, cook for her, but what didn't ever let her leave that area. There were also reports that she would starve her slaves and whenever her kids would try to feed them, she would beat them. So after these incidents happened, people became really suspicious of her, rightfully so. And eventually investigators came to search the Lalari mansion. And it was at this point that they were found guilty of illegal cruelty and they were forced to free nine of their slaves. However, this just did not work as planned because her family members, different family members that didn't live with her, ended up buying them back in an auction and just giving them back to her. So they made their way back to her anyway. But then on April 10th of 1834, the Lolaris were throwing a big party in their mansion. During the party, somehow a fire broke out in the kitchen. So all of the guests freaked out obviously and abandoned the house. And they actually ended up keeping the party going. They just moved it elsewhere, which was weird enough. But Delphine and Louis did not make it. The two of them actually left the party immediately, got on a boat to Alabama. And then from Alabama, they took a boat to Paris. So basically they realized that the house was on fire. The police were gonna come in, firefighters were gonna come in and they were gonna see the conditions that they had this place in and the way that they had treated their slaves. So they knew that their best bet was to get the fuck out of there. So once the fire department showed up, they actually found the chef still chained to the stove, but she ended up confessing to the fire department that she actually started the fire in an attempt to kill herself. And the reason that she did it was because she was afraid that eventually she would make a mistake and Delphine would take her to the top floor. According to her, anyone who was taken up to the top floor never came back down again. The day after the fire, some of the people who were at the party came out and said that they were trying to get into the slave quarters during the fire to make sure that they were okay or get them out of there. And Delphine wouldn't let them in there. And so they ended up having to break down the door. And in the reports of what exactly was in there is kind of shaky, but here is overall what people claim to have seen. When they first broke in, they said they saw seven people in horrible condition. One of them was hanging by their necks with their limbs hanging 
hanging and stretching so far down that they were starting to tear. And just to warn you guys, all of this is really, really brutal. And I normally don't go into detail about this kind of stuff, but it is Freak Week and I know a lot of you want to know. So if you don't normally like to hear gory details, it's probably your time to bounce out. But some of them had their eyeballs sewn shut and some of them had feces like shit put in their mouths and then their mouths sewn shut. Some of them had their body parts removed and put on different parts of their body like rearranged. Some of them even had reconstructive surgery, whatever that means, or genital mutation as well. One woman had all of her bones broken but then was rearranged and stuffed inside of a tiny box. Another woman they called Spider Woman and she was set up like rearranged on the ground, which I can't even picture how this happened, but her body parts were apparently rearranged so that she looked like a spider. And then this is probably the creepiest part of all, but there were people with holes drilled into their skulls and spoons nearby that were used to stir their brains. One man was actually pinned to the wall and had his face dissected. And a lot of these people were still alive, asking to be put out of their misery, asking to be finally killed because they were just alive and tortured. So you can imagine how bad it smelled in there. There's all this decomposing flesh and there were maggots all over the place, which is oh, disgusting. So as you can imagine, it didn't take long for word to get out, especially since people from the party saw this scene before the police even did. So almost everyone in the streets just knew about the truth about the Larley mansion and what Delphine and Louis were doing in there. So before the police even got there to look at it themselves, a mob had formed outside and attacked the mansion and they just destroyed the place, ransacked it because they believed that the Lalaris were still in there or were somewhere nearby and they didn't want them to be able to come back to this mansion. So it was completely destroyed. Basically only the walls were left standing by the time the police actually got there. All the slaves that were left or in bad condition were rounded up and brought to the local jail where they did a viewing which is just so weird. I don't know what's up with this kind of stuff happening back then, but we actually have another story coming where they did this weird type of viewing like this. But more than 4,000 people apparently came to view the bodies and view the slaves. I have no idea why they did that back then. It's super bizarre. So there's a lot of questions obviously about why Delphine and Louis did these crimes. Back then there wasn't much known about the human body and people were actually really known for dissecting and digging up graves or checking out dead bodies because people were genuinely curious about the human body back then. So it could have been a little bit of that. Maybe she saw them as some type of experiment for her, some type of lab rat for her. There's also just the idea that she was a sadist, which means she liked to inflict pain on top of people, that she enjoyed hurting people, that she got some type of weird pleasure out of it, you know, just was mentally ill that way. Or there's an idea that she could have been trying to solve a past crime. Right before the fire happened, her mother was actually killed on a different property that they owned. So some people actually believe that she was interrogating these slaves to try to get information out of them to try to somehow possibly solve who killed her mother. And as far as what happened to Delphine and Louis, their lives really Really aren't documented after all of this happened. It is known that they ended up staying in Paris because obviously they came back to New Orleans. That would not have worked out so well for them. It is reported that Louis ended up dying from an accident while he was hunting wild hogs. And this is crazy and there isn't any way to confirm this, but it is reported that Delphine may have returned to New Orleans and continued the torture. And the reason people believe this is because there's actually a grave in the St. Louis Cemetery in New Orleans that has a plate that says in French, Madame Lalari, born Marie Delphine McCarthy, died in Paris December 7th, 1842. However, according to French archives in Paris, the records show that she didn't die until 1849. So because of this mix up, people think that there's a chance that she really did die in New Orleans and they just got the dates mixed up to make it seem like she died in Paris. It's still a big mystery, but her body has never been found. Many years later, they were doing reconstruction on the mansion and construction workers actually found bones and pieces of skeletons buried under the ground in different sections of the floor like in different holes or in the walls. By 1888 the house was supposedly so rebuilt that you wouldn't have been able to even recognize it and it was like a completely new place. Now here's what's really
really weird about the house. Over the years, it was used for several different things, such as a school, a conservatory for music, a house for young delinquents, a bar, a furniture store, and an apartment building. And this is super weird. But in 2007, Nicolas Cage actually purchased this mansion for $3.45 million. And what's really interesting is that the mortgage documents didn't even contain Cage's name anywhere on them. Was he trying to keep his ownership of the house like a secret for some reason? Anyway, November 13th, 2009, the property was foreclosed and listed for auction and now it is privately owned and you cannot take tours or anything inside. So no one knows what kind of creepy events happen inside of that house to this day. I mean, I'm sure the place is haunted. It has to be really, really creepy. So let me know what you guys think about this story. Did you hear about this before? I had never heard of it and I was really, really shocked when I heard the details behind this one because wow, this Delphine girl was crazy. And it sounds like her husband didn't participate that much. Like he kind of obviously knew it was happening, but kind of turned a blind eye and it was really her that was doing everything. So it's super weird, but definitely let me know what you guys think of day one of Freak Week by hitting the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. I am posting videos every single day until Halloween. And that's it for me today, you guys. I will see you next time.